power grid is a massive machine, arguably the largest machine ever built. It's millions of miles of wire connecting millions of homes to the power plants that generate the electricity we need. It's hard to imagine living without it. But there's a man in the high desert of New Mexico who thinks that we can. We went through a, f a phase of uh, evolution where we got into centralization. Centralized water, centralized power, centralized sewage. And the infrastructure is phenomenal now. When, you, when, you go to, when I go to a city and I look up, I don't see a sky. I see wires and power poles and transformers. And, and to, it, to me it seems really archaic to be delivering power to millions of houses when each house is touching the power of the sun. This is Michael Reynolds, founder of Earthships Biotexture, and he thinks we can get off the grid entirely, generate our own electricity, and all we need to do is rethink how we design our homes. A regular house is a, a box, really. No matter what, how beautiful you may sculpt it out to be, it's still a box that is hooked up to power plants, an infrastructure for water, an infrastructure for gas, an infrastructure for sewage. It's like you being hooked up in a hospital to life support. That's what a house is. An Earthship is like you walking out of the hospital. An Earthship is a home, just like any other home, but it utilizes sustainable construction techniques so that it doesn't need to be connected to the grid. It provides its own heating and cooling, captures and recycles all its own water, produces its own food, and generates its own electricity. That makes them a vessel, that makes them a machine, not just a shelter, like a teepee or a box or something like that. How is this possible? Well, we're gonna find out. For over 40 years, Michael Reynolds has been building Earth ships. They've been built all over the world in all kinds of climates, from the deserts of New Mexico all the way to Siberia. How do you build one of these? What is it that goes into them? Well, it's, I'm looking at a global solution, let's say. So if I'm gonna look at a global solution and build buildings globally, I have to have a global building block. So I looked around and looked around and looked around. What do I see all over the planet? Every country, every city that I have ever been to and I've been all over the world. Tires are indigenous to the entire planet. Bottles are indigenous to the entire planet. Cans are indigenous to the entire planet. So I looked at them and, and played around with them as building materials. When you look at them as not garbage, see, I, I think that's the thing. We invented the word garbage. We invented garbage. To me, it's a resource. Where are we? What is this? <laughs> this is a job site. This is uh, the latest one that we've started. And this is just the, some of the foundation work and some of like, the very first tire work. This is Parker. He works at Earthships Biotexture and he gave us a tour of the Earthships they're building. And th these tires, where do they come from? They, just... they come from the dump. Yeah? Okay. So you can see our tire wall. Yeah. So what's happening here? This is a can wall. All this is, is plaster and cans. And if you, you know, try to push it over. Come on, man. <laughs> just cans. Yeah, it's just a bunch of beer cans, man. So as you can see, this is building material for the Earth ship. And these uh, Earth ships, they produce their own electricity. Is that right? Yeah, it's not rocket science. Everybody knows about photovoltaic. Uh, electricity, the thing that we have moved forward on is we make the building through its other encounters need not much electricity. It's not needed for heating and cooling. The building heats and cools itself, vastly reducing the amount of electricity needed and making it so that you can provide it from solar or wind. So the solar energy um, is stored in batteries? Batteries, yeah, like a whole battery bank and depending on where you live and how, how much daylight hours you, you get, uh, even like on the winter solstice, and then combine that with how cush of a life you want to live, that will determine how many solar panels, how many batteries you need. Can you just walk up on the roof? So our panels are on the front, the south facing end of our roof, and they'll feed to our, our battery bank. But the roof of an earth ship isn't just for solar collection. This whole roof here, when it rains, like this in entire roof will catch water. Water flows off the roof, down into these big salad bowls, and into our cisterns, which we're standing on top of. And from there, it'll feed through here. Since it's rainwater, and it's, you know, it's not, hasn't been injected with chlorine or fluoride or whatever they're using to treat water uh, in cities these days, um, we've got to treat our own water. So we go through uh, a few different filters, and then a drinking water filter. And then it's ready to go 
to uh, the sink, it's where you go to the shower. In your apartment in Chicago, when you shower, where does, when your water goes down, goes down the drain, where does it go? Uh, I mean, the sewer, I guess? <laughs> <laughs> right, really yeah, just leaves, yeah. you know. So we have, and again, you can't see it because we try to make our, a lot of our houses look real fancy and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but the piping will actually go straight out to our greenhouse here. The shower water goes to water the plants. Yeah, they are being watered just by you showering. Because I have a real trouble like remembering to water plants. If it was just when I showered, that'd be much easier. And we collect it at the end and then we pump it to our toilet because who, who needs like the cleanest water to go to the bathroom in? Like, who would actually say that that's a requirement of theirs? Yeah, I mean, we don't drink out of the toilet anyway. So. <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> at, least, at least I don't. <laughs> Matt, where are we going right now? We're going to another Earth ship. Uh, I don't remember the name of it. Wavy. <laughs> Wavy? Wavy. Wavy, that's the one we're staying in. Yeah. And yeah, we're, going, we're going to the Earth ship that we're staying in. Yeah. Very nice. This is a great place. I think this is the nicest place the good stuff's ever stayed. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, you guys get to, they put you up in four stars or? Usually it's uh, four of us in a La Quinta in bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> Do you know what the temperature's supposed to be tonight? Um, outside, it's been getting down right around freezing. What about, so how does, is this gonna stay warm in here? Yeah. Is it just insulation that's keeping it warm? Um, well, it's the thermal mass that's keeping it warm. So remember, we saw the tires, we saw yeah. the dirt pounding in, uh, pounding in tires. The dirt is thermal mass. Okay. You pound it in thick like that, and when the sun hits it, that dirt traps the heat. The other thing is, so having the greenhouse and all this glass facing south is like solar gain. So even in your flagstone, it gets fried by the sun all day long. You feel it right now, it's warm. And oh, all yeah. this, all this heat. When when the source of the heat goes away, like in in the evening, when it's cold, all this heat is just escapes to the cold place. And so to keep that from escaping to the outside, that's what we have insulation for. What about in the summer when it's like really hot? It gets pretty hot here, right? Mm -hmm. How does it stay cool then? Uh, we have c these convection tubes right here. So remember that the back of this building is you know buried with dirt, just tons and tons of dirt. These tubes go through all that. Air comes in, goes through all of that, that thermal mass that cools it, and then you just have this cool air that shoots through the house. So you open these skylights, you have these cooling tubes open, and it creates convection, creates airflow. And that's how these stay cool in the summertime. That's it, that's air conditioning? Yeah, it's, it's convection. It's, yeah, it's, right. cool, it's cool air coming from outside the house, working its way through yeah, the mean, house. You definitely can feel it. Well, we spent the night in the Earth ship, the good stuff crew and I, and it was great. I really want to live in one of these. It was funny, it was actually really warm in there. I think it got down, it got down into like the 30s last night here, but it was really warm in the Earth ship. Uh, I think you, David, had to open the vents at one point. Yeah, I did. It was actually like almost hot in there. So uh, it was pretty, it was pretty amazing. And then this morning when we woke up, it was just felt like a comfortable, Oh yeah, it was very comfortable. Temperature. So I want to check out the uh, the water system and see how that's doing. So you can see water in the gutter here. Yeah, and there's water coming down into the salad bowls. Um, I guess it's just dew or the morning mist. It didn't rain last night. Yeah, it didn't rain. This is the desert, but it's kind of amazing how much water you can get if you just there to capture it. <laughs> How are we going to evolve unless we take some chances? And I take chances. I know people can live without infrastructure, and I want to present that that's possible, and actually the quality of life is better. You certainly don't have a utility bill. It's up to the people to have the roadmap of how to get their life straight out of the sky, straight out of the earth, to then render these methods that are destroying the planet useless. Where can they get that roadmap? We're trying to do it. We're trying to draw it. We're, we're demonstrating it. So what do you think? Is going off the grid the future? Would you want to live in an Earth ship? Or would you rather just live in an airship like in the Final Fantasy video games? Let us know in the comments. Also, there's a link in the doobly-doo if you want to rent out 
the Earth ship. It's basically like an Airbnb. Yeah, it's awesome. That's what we did. I didn't. You guys didn't want me to. Yeah, you totally missed out. I talk in my sleep. They can't sleep then. Thanks for watching. If you like this show, you could click the like button or you could subscribe to be notified for more. Or you can go to Patreon and become a financial supporter of the show and help us make more episodes. Also, in two weeks, our new playlist starts all about secrets and Mike Rugnetta is in one of those videos. Yeah, we went out to Area 51. We got about as close as we could without getting shot. Last week, we talked to Derek from Veritasium about nuclear power and this is what you had to say about it. Afro Samurai said that there are currently 12 nuclear power plants in Germany. He's responding to when Derek Mahler said that Germany is getting rid of nuclear power. And yes, there are currently power plants there. We probably should have been more clear, but they're phasing them out. When the Fukushima disaster happened, Germany declared that they were going to get rid of all nuclear power by 2020. Professor Puppet and a bunch of you other non-Puppet people asked about thorium, which is another element that could be used to make nuclear power that's theoretically better than uranium. Thorium is more abundant than uranium, so it's easier to mine, and a thorium reactor would produce less waste than a uranium. One. Also, it's hard to make a nuclear bomb out of it, so the threat of nuclear proliferation is less. So why aren't we using thorium instead of uranium if it's so much better? Well, a couple reasons. Not being able to make nuclear bombs out of it, maybe one, because with uranium it's like a two-for-one deal. You get energy and you get weapons, if you're into that sort of thing. It's also really expensive to make a thorium plant, which is a problem with nuclear power in general. So if you want to build a nuclear plant, you need the backing of, like, a government and that government's probably going to want nuclear weapons. It does seem like India is investing in thorium reactors, but we'll have to see how that goes. So there are a lot of advantages to thorium over uranium, but there are also some large hurdles to get over before we can make a thorium nuclear plant. Uh, thanks to a lot of the commenters in the comment threads who actually gave a lot of details about thorium and the advantages and disadvantages. So if you want more details, actually just look in the comments. Uh, there's a lot there. Marcus Ross was wondering why Derek has such white teeth. Well, I texted him and this is what he said, and it's more interesting than I thought. <clears throat> My front two teeth are fake because I smashed them as a kid and they died, turned gray, and needed to be root canal. So I keep them white by replacing them with fake white teeth. Still though, kids, I would recommend brushing twice a day instead of smashing your teeth. Thanks for all your great comments. In two weeks, our new playlist starts all about secrets. And if you haven't checked it out yet, we have a new series called Time Capsule. First playlist all about the Civil War. Check it out. Check it out. See you there. Bye. Bye.